Hey guys, so Andrew Yang recently raised a million dollars in donations, so congratulations to Andrew. He's actually trending very strong now, uh, much stronger than anyone in the political, with a political agenda would assume. So I'm going to break down exactly what makes um, him so easy to donate to. And I think his goal is 1.5 million for Q3. I think it's possible. I thought that was a very high goal. One of the things that makes him very unique is uh, the stereotypes that people associate with Asian people. And he's been criticized. I will make another video by Asian Americans for you know these stereotypes. So Asians are considered the model minority. Uh, they are considered, well, obviously they're a minority, but they're considered a model because they don't fight back, they don't complain, they just do a good job. Uh, a very common case would be if there were individuals and one of them was Asian, one of them was um, not Asian, the Asian employee is less likely to complain and therefore be promoted. So this is supported by data. Uh, even if you look at Tinder, uh, the least popular category of datables is the Asian male. But of course, that's not really complained about. You don't ever see anyone complain, an Asian male complain about Tinder, right? And you have to ask why. If there is so much um, discrimination on this app, I mean, why is no one talking about this? So that is actually the strongest point of Andrew Yang. Andrew Yang is not afraid to tackle these issues in a positive way. So that BBC article written by an Asian saying math, right? Oh, math. As if it was something kind of as if we were back in high school where the athletes would say, hey, you're just a math nerd, a math elite, right? So if you watch the movie with Lindsay Lohan, um, mean, I'm remembering it incorrectly, mean something. Um, actually, one of my friends from NYU was in the movie, and he was the Asian Mathlete. Uh, his name is Wei. Uh, his last name starts with a C, and he went to NYU Tisch at the time, and he was one of the first people I met uh, at NYU, and he was the uh, Chinese math elite. Uh, he eventually went to UPenn Law and uh, and he's a beautiful family now. So uh, congrats, Wei. When you deal with these stereotypes, oh, Asians are good at math. Um, that's kind of not viewed positively when you're in high school, right? So being a math elite, as that movie would show, is not viewed positively. And even it's not viewed positively today, like, you know, being a nerd, oh, you're just a math nerd. And he has created a pin that he sells for 8 or $10 with just the math. And that's why Andrew Yang is able to raise so much money is, um, and I'll be honest, so this is a characteristic that I wish I could learn more from him. He's very positive. He's a positive guy. And that's it. It really is that simple. So something that would make me mad in high school where people would bully. I was very much bullied in high school because I liked math. I liked coding. I took a computer coding class. We only had one class and I found it was really good. And I'm doing development today on websites. And that's the class that encouraged me to leave the law profession and do it because I, that's what I loved doing back then. I still love doing it today. So math was used as something to attack Andrew Yang and math was used as something to attack me and our outcomes were very different. So I didn't, you know, I was very good at math. I was like, oh, I don't care about math anymore. I don't want to be a, a nerdy math elite, you know, in high school or in college. I'll just be popular. But Andrew has taken it and even monetized it, which is incredibly difficult to do. And now it's a pin and now it's his logo. So something that people used kind of to attack him, he used it in a positive manner. And the same thing with the uh, fired employee who is, quote, the first recipient of Andrew's $1,000 freedom dividend. Even though, see, once the details came out, it made Andrew look very good 
because she was receiving a six-figure bonus, which we can assume she had a six-figure base salary. So they were definitely not underpaying her. She left for almost a month of vacation. The team performed just as well, according to her. And then she got two-year severance. It wasn't, you know, in New York, if it's at will, which is the same as in Texas, you don't need to give your employees any severance at all. And it's very rare for someone to get two years of it. So if that's, you know, your attack on him, I mean, hey, give me a six-figure bonus in two years severance. I'll take it. Uh, I will take it. So Andrew is just a positive guy. And that resonates in the way that he has dealt with um, the Asian comedian actor, which I'll do another video on. Not the Asian, the uh, com the comedian who has made some pretty racy Asian jokes. Um, and it's what I find is uh, the Canadian Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, he was like really equality, women's rights, and just very like, you know, multicultural. Then it came out that he did a uh, blackface, not just once, but I think three times. And then once he was like with a bunch of students, like when I look at that picture and I'm like, whoa, these are students and you're teaching students like this is okay. And your whole political stance is about like not treating people poorly, being multicultural and accepting. Uh oh, you know, um, Andrew's not like that. He's not two-faced, or in this case, he does not have paint on his face, I guess, like Justin does. I know a lot of you like Justin Trudeau, but honestly, that picture with him and those um, female students, and I think they were high school students, I'm like, oh, that's, and then he has, you know, obviously he's pretending to be a Saudi Arabian, I think, in that picture. I like, oh, man. That guy is the president of Canada now. Like, whoa. And he in his stance. So Andrew Yang is different from most politicians because he's positive. I have run political campaigns before. A big one. A big one and then two small ones and then some other ones. And the first thing you learn as a political campaign man, I so I did the digital marketing. I did the YouTube ads. I did the display the retargeting, uh, well, the first thing you learn is you have to spend all the money. Uh, you can't leave any money into the account, so it all has to be spent in advertisement. And the second thing you learn is it's far easier to be negative than positive. And this is supported by statistics and data. So whenever it's election time, if you want, and here's, oh, he's charging $15 for the math lapel pin. Okay, I thought he was charging eight to 10. Um, even better branding than I thought. It's just a simple pin, math. And it's going for $15, and I'm sure that a lot of people have bought the pin for $15. He's able to do something that I haven't seen many politicians do, is to take something that is normally considered bad. Um, like, all my friends are doctors. That offended a lot of Asian people. But like, why is it offending you? Or the person that was, quote, let go because he was married, then you look at the facts and you're like, wait a second, you weren't let go because you were married. You let go because you were not a good employee. You were an employee, according to her own facts, you were an employee who was causing all types of trouble because you wanted equity because you knew the company would sell for $88 million. That is the first employee I would let go is the financially, quote, financially unstable employee we were paying six figures, six figure bonus to, and who wanted to put money into equity now that she knew that we were going to sell. And so you have a rogue top level employee causing all types, I mean, imagine all the types of trouble she would cause during the buyout. So Kaplan probably told the CEO at the time of Manhattan GMAT, who was not, the CEO was uh, the owner, the founder, the main guy who was making the decisions was not Andrew Yang. Hey, we need to kind of like level with this person because he's going to make a lot of trouble for us when we do a buyout. How do I know this? Because 
I work with the master of ven venture capital, Mr. Daniel DeWolf, who wrote the book of venture capital that's being used in law schools. And, the, and then the book says the most dangerous thing to emerging acquisition is when you have someone who doesn't have equity who wants to get equity right before you sell it. That's a very dangerous player. And that's not someone you want to have equity in the company that you're just going to buy. Because it complicates so many different things. Because once you're done buying the company and that person's equity in the company, they're going to want to sell it to you. They're either not going to leave, which is terrible, or they're going to want to sell it to you for a huge multiple because they know that you have to buy them out. And that's what I think that individual wanted to do. So in the case of Andrew Yang, um, very positive guy, and that's how he was able to raise a million dollars. People like the positive message. And to be frank, as a marketing, as a well-known two-time Google award-winning marketing expert, I'm surprised that message is actually resonating given my own political campaign management for digital marketing. Uh, when I've seen 10 to 1 returns on attacking someone instead of promoting a positive message. So he took math, which was being used as an insult. And you might, many of you will be like, oh, how's math an insult? Trust me, when you are in middle school or elementary school or in uh, high school and someone says math to you and you're Asian, that doesn't feel good because, you know, I, it just doesn't feel good. Because there's a lot of racial things built up. Oh, all Asians are good at math. Now help me with my math homework, you nerd. Like people are not saying math because you're cool. They're not saying, oh, you're a part of the basketball team. That's cool. Oh, you're part of the football team. That's cool. No, they're not using math in the same way they would use the term football or sports in high school. And I know that because, you know, I was part of the math elites when I was in uh, middle school. And I was part of robotics teams in middle school. And I was part, of, I coded, I made my own website when I was in high school. And I presented it into my class and they were like, math. That's not what they were like, but that's kind of what they were like. Um, I had a really bad English teacher in 12th grade. My gosh. Uh, everyone else got A's on their special project and I got like a 92. I got like an A minus. I was like, you've never given anyone an A. Everyone else has 100. And I put in so much time. And you know what it was? It was a manga. It was a English story. That's why I was presenting in English. And because Asian people are not good at English, I got the lowest grade that anyone ever got on a special project. Math. Bye, guys.